Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'll be giving my final thoughts on season one of Bark Skins from Nat Geo. So as I said in my first review, I've been really compelled to watch this show. I think it has some of the best production value of a show in recent years. It gives me a lot of Game of Thrones vibes. It's able to create such an interesting world taking place in this historical time period. And I think the way that they're able to craft it around such a pristine and enveloping setting of you know Canada, the wild New France territory during this time, I think it makes it an interesting show. But I have to say, I'm really confused by the way they tried to stick the landing or what they're attempting to do with this first season, because we don't have a season two yet, but it ends so abruptly. Like, honestly, when I was watching it, I was watching it. Okay, this is episode eight. I didn't really know how many episodes long it was. I thought it was maybe 10 episodes long. And it ends, it gets to the end. I'm like, all right, when's the next, when's the next episode on? And then I looked and I saw that it was the finale of this season and it's not renewed for a season two yet. And it doesn't resolve like any plot points throughout the whole thing and I don't feel like it takes away from the performances. I think that this series had some really quality performance particularly by David Thewlis as Monsieur. He's so interesting as a character and he totally takes over the screen like I said in my first review and I think he becomes more and more compelling as the story goes along because he is this charismatic over-the-top character but when you see him being put in positions where he's uncomfortable with where he's dealing with his soon-to-be wife and you're seeing him being treated smaller a little he's larger than life but being treated as kind of, you know, just some guy, you get to see a little bit more layers to him and his relationships and how he feels about himself and the people around him. And I think that subtle acting by him was really well executed. I also think that Thomas Wright, who plays Cook, really came on as the show started going. I thought he was just going to be this maniacal. He almost seems like a Disney villain at times in the first couple episodes. But as it goes along, you really get to see the layers of him and his dealing with loss and just overall trying to cope with this new world where he's kind of the enemy. He's there living among the French. He's the kind of the bad English businessman. And seeing his relationship grow with some of the characters, I really was invested. And that's something that makes me a little disappointed with the finale in general is that I was really invested in these characters. Towards the beginning, I kind of didn't know who they were. There's a lot of different stories going on. And as they all kind of come together and all these stories cross paths, I was so interested in what's going to happen to everyone. And the fact that they ended it on such a cliffhanger, it, it almost feels like a mid, mid season finale more than an end of season finale that I really hope that Nat Geo renews it. I think they will. This has a pretty good, you know, following. It may have not got the best critical reviews from everyone, but I think the audiences that watched it really enjoyed it. I personally really enjoyed it and I'm hoping for a season two. Now, something that I touched on in my first review is how much this show emphasizes the setting. And I think that's something that's a testament to National Geographic being involved in this production is that the world around it is almost as important as the interplaying things inside this world. And the fact that we're dealing with a more historical and realistic time period than maybe something like Game of Thrones, I think for me makes it that much more compelling because I'm watching events unfold and I kind of know where these things are going to go. I kind of understand the players that are here on this board. And you get to get more of a feel of the relationships of the Native Americans and the French and the English and how this political landscape is built among this kind of ruleless and an untamable wilderness. I think it's really well executed. Now, one thing I will say about the production that bothered me a little bit, and maybe it was just, you know, how I was watching it on maybe my television set or something like that. But when it goes to nighttime, it does create a very strong sense of uneasiness. It's hard to see what's going on. A lot of bad things happen at night on the show, but it's so dark. There were moments when I was watching it when it would go to the nighttime scenes where I honestly didn't know what was going on. Even when the characters go inside, sometimes it gets really, really, really dark. But maybe that's just a product of what I'm watching it on. Maybe my television get up the brightness or something like that. But I don't really run into those issues a lot when I watch television shows, other than maybe the last season of Game of Thrones on the Battle of Winterfell. That was really dark. But I felt like that was like that at multiple times, especially in, I think it was the last episode, when you're seeing Cook's man trying to wheel the barrel out and he's taking it out to... The Native Americans and the English to try and get the guns out to them, but then it's it's so dark. Like I don't even I couldn't even see what's happening. I didn't know who he was talking to. I didn't know what happened to the girl because she kind of just I see saw like a movement, like she moved or something. But it's, I couldn't see what was going on. So I mean, just up the brightness a little bit. Maybe it's just me. I also thought that Duquette became a far more interesting character. James Bloor is playing that character because in the beginning I'm like he's just the Weasley guy. I hate to keep comparing the show to Game of Thrones, but it, it's the easiest comparison for me. He reminded me of like Reek or Theon. He's kind of like the weasel guy who's in the background making his way, doing things the kind of sneaky way to get above social climbing. And I liked how he's become such an interesting character whether you love him or hate him because he does have some redeemable moments. I do like 
that we're seeing all the facets of the people and how they deal with this social structure during this time period. You're seeing the fur trapper. You're seeing someone that's just kind of doing the honest, hard labor work, working for someone. You see the aristocrats. You see some of the merchant class. You see the soldiers. And then you see him kind of like the sneaky guy. You see the handmaids. You see all the things that kind of create this world. And I like that each character has a very distinct social status and social style in a different way. So I like seeing all the different parts, even if it does make the show a little complex at times. I do like the fact that they went in to show all these different social classes and their roles in this new society. Another character that really grew on me as the series went along is Gomes. He is someone who I didn't really know what he was going to be. I thought he was just kind of be the guy that moves the story along. He bounces between these different parties. He's the company man. He's kind of just there to move the story along. But you start to learn more about the complexities of him, especially as regarding with his sister and why he's actually there and his like moral conflicts. And I think he's going to be a very interesting character as the story moves along. I think we're going to shift the focus onto almost him as a main character if we go to season two. Obviously, he's not, you know, the most throwaway character, but I think he's going to become a major emphasis because of his betrayal and everything that happens with him at the finale. But it's so weird the way that they took like him and Monsieur and all these other people and throw everything up in the air. They waited to the last episode, the last like 10 minutes of the last episode to just throw everything into flux and be like, well, it's that's it. It's over. So I'm hoping, you know, given the current climate, we might have a huge delay in when this series would even come out with a season two. I'm hoping that they're willing to do a season two because I think it'd be a huge missed opportunity. I really enjoyed season one. I'm interested to see what you guys think about it. How, how particularly did you feel about the finale? Did you feel like the finale was kind of fumbled and maybe they didn't have enough content to flesh out a whole series or a whole season? Because... I don't know, it just felt so strange to me. It was very unsatisfying, in my opinion. Extremely unsatisfying, the way they wrapped up that last episode. So those are my final thoughts on season one of Bark Skins. Like I said, really enjoyed it, really solid. Something that we haven't seen on television in a little bit. I think it was executed in a way that makes it very compelling. It felt, for me, on par or better than something like Vikings, similar to a style of Game of Thrones. I would love to see this show with even more of a budget. It created such an awesome atmosphere with such practicality. So to be able to like up that budget a little bit more and even up the wardrobe and the, everything going on with the set design, it already looked great. So if it could take it to that next level, I really hope Nat Geo does it. I haven't watched a lot of Nat Geo content, so I don't know what their like budgeting is for their show. So I'm hoping they're willing to throw some more into this one. So again, Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and leave those comments down below and let me know what you thought about it again. And see you guys next time.